Hi everyone, my name is Grace Cisna. I'm the CPA on staff of Projection Hub, and today I'm gonna to take a little time to walk you through our Donut Shop Excel template. Just a couple pointers before we get started. So this Donut Shop Excel template, like all of our Excel templates, has some input tabs in light blue at the very bottom. So these are the tabs that you need to fill out in order to get to the output tabs, which are shown in green and one in orange here. Um, on these input tabs, you're going to see cells in that same light blue color directing to you to where you need to input data. And you'll see example data in the file already, and this is just to show you how to format the data. It's not necessarily industry standard or something like that. Um, it's just showing you what you could put in the boxes. Um, just a note about all of our templates, if you need help uh, filling out the template or it's working for you, but you need some modifications for it to fit your business perfectly, please reach out to us at support at projectionhub.com. Uh, we can modify these templates for you really easily, so feel free to reach out. All right, diving into the Donut Shop template, I'm going to start on the Input Assumptions tab. The Input Assumptions tab is where we gather a bunch of information, most of which is going to end up on the balance sheet. Um, so we've got your name, the projection start date, uh, any investment funds that you're receiving or paying in yourself, um, your inventory assumptions, your accounts receivable assumptions, and then uh, fixed assets and loans. So with the fixed assets and loans, we're gonna gather some really basic information, such as the purchase amount, the life expectancy, the stoppage cost, um, and for loans, things like the interest rate and the number of monthly payments. And then we're gonna be calculating those pesky things like um, interest expense and depreciation expense for you. So you don't have to worry about those. We're gonna factor them into the model for you. Once you fill out everything on the input assumptions tab, we're gonna jump forward to the input revenue model, which is customized in this case to a donut shop. Um, this would work for any sort of small business similar to a donut shop, whether you're selling cookies or ice cream. Uh, we do have an ice cream template as well. Um, you know, if it's a small bakery or something like that. So this would work well for any sort of business similar to a donut shop. Um, so the first thing we do is calculate uh, customer visits, both from new customers, um, and we show those coming from two different sources, advertising and then organic sources. So we look at new customers, and then we also factor in the buildup of regular customers over time. So people who show up once and then continue to show up um, a regular number of times every month. So once we have the new visitors and the active regulars, we fa factor in the number of visits that those regulars are making per month. Um, in this case, we start out with 1.5 visits in the first month, and then it jumps up to two visits a month. So then we can calculate total customer visits, both from those new visitors here, and then the 1.5 visits for all of our active regulars here. So in month one, we end up with our total customer visits. Um, we've got some data here about customers per day and customers per hour, just so you can see if your estimates are realistic. From there, we sort of have a place where you can enter your menu. Um, so this is things like donuts, um, other food items, drinks, and then you give us the average price for those items there, and then the average number of purchases per person per visit. So you see that these are all less than one. Um, for example, seeing that about 0.8 or 80% of your customers are purchasing an individual donut when they come in. Um, and then if you'll see at the bottom here, we have the average purchases per person. In this case, in the model, it's 2.2. So that's assuming every time someone comes in, they're purchasing about 2.2 different items. From there, we look at the average spend per person per visit. Now, this is calculated for you based on the average prices and the average number of purchases per person per visit in this box. Um, we allow an annual growth rate here, assuming either your prices are growing over time or people are buying more expensive things or more of those items over time. So that's going to help us calculate our donut revenue. Another source of revenue that you might have would be merchandise revenue. If you've got t-shirts or cups or whatever you might be selling. So if you're selling merchandise revenue, we're going to estimate some percentage of the customers that are purchasing merchandise and their average spend, which can grow over time. From there, we will calculate your donut revenue and the merchandise revenue at the bottom to get to your total revenue. And these are going to get shipped off to the financial statements. After we calculate revenue, we need to calculate your cost of goods sold. So there's two things that go into your cost of goods sold. One is the direct material, so the flour, the yeast, the frosting, um, whatever it is that goes into donuts um, for merchandise. That might be the actual cost of the t-shirts or whatever it is that you're selling. And then the direct labor that goes into making donuts. So um, direct materials is just a basic percentage of revenue. So you can see your gross margin on direct materials is calculated here. And then labor is calculated using this information here. So we talk about your number of hours open every week, the total extra hours, um, those opening and closing hours on either side of the times that you're actually open, um, the average rate per employee per hour, and then we talk about the number of transactions that each employee can handle per hour. 
And then we're going to pull data from our revenue tab, namely this data here, the customers per hour, to see how many um, employees are going to need every hour. And then we set a minimum number of employees. So even if um, it's a little slow at the beginning and you wouldn't necessarily need all those employees, obviously you're going to have more at the business working. So once we reach an amount, in this case, we never get over three necessary. So it just stays at three. Um, but if we were to reduce the number of hours every week, let's see, dramatically, um, you could see over time you would need more and more employees because that would be more customers per hour. So that's going to calculate your um, direct materials and direct labor for you down at the bottom here. And again, that'll get shipped off to the financial statements. Um, other expenses, these are all your operating expenses that are not cost of goods sold and salaries, both of which are calculated on another tab. Um, these are pretty self-explanatory, so you can enter the expense, um, the expense category here, and then whether it's a fixed amount or a percentage of revenue amount. Um, so there's two ways to calculate uh, calculate expenses here. Either they're fixed and flat every month, like you see for advertising, or they can be calculated as a percentage of revenue, like credit card fees here. And there's a drop-down list, um, so you can measure it between fixed and total revenue. In this case, total revenue. No, if you're using this percentage amount, you're going to want to use um, 0 0.0 something or 0.10 or whatever it would be, not 10 for 10%, 10 but 0.1. On the salaries and owner draw tab, you can enter in um, salaries of your salaried employees, those who are not hourly. Um, and you can create duplicate employees here to make this really easy to use. So you just enter their salary, any taxes and benefits, um, as well as their annual raise. And then if you were the owner and you plan on paying yourself by drawing funds out of the business, you can enter that down here in the owner draw category. Once we've entered all that data, we can jump forward to the output tab. So the at a glance tab is a lot of pretty charts and graphs that are just ready to be pulled into a pitch deck if you're pitching to investors, um, or they make everything kind of easier to digest here. So we've got some helpful ratios, a summary of the financial statements, and then some charts and graphs showing you um, various items here. The next three statements or next three tabs are the financial statements in annual formats. We have the income statement, the cash flow statement, and the balance sheet, each showing you five years um, worth of data. So you see our income statement here, the cash flow statement, very similar, but includes items just uh, cash from loans and investments and cash paid for fixed assets, which don't go on the income statement. And then the balance sheet summary um, showing your assets and stockholders equity or shareholders equity plus your liabilities down here at the bottom. Um, no, our balance sheets are always going to balance for you. Um, the total assets and the total liabilities and equity are always going to equal each other. That's one of the big hangups for people creating their own financial statements is it's really challenging to get your balance sheet to balance without plugging something. But ours are going to be all properly calculating based on the information you provide. So they're going to balance for you. Uh, from there, we have the income statement, the cash flow statement, and the balance sheet again, but this time showing every single month for those five years. So you can see a month by month amount here. Um, this is really helpful, especially on the cash flow statement. You can see your cash at the end of the period um, to make sure that your cash is never going to dip below zero, because that would be an indicator that you either need to raise more funds or maybe adjust your expenses so that you have enough cash to keep you operating. See the balance sheet as well. So those are all the output tabs here. The last tab I'm going to talk about is the investor dashboard, which is new to version two of all of our models. So the investor dashboard enables you to play with different scenarios for your income statement without changing the rest of the model. So this is pulling forward all those same calculations that get us to the income statement, but enabling you to change some of the stuff that you plugged in on the input revenue tab. So um, for example, regular customers is on the input revenue tab, and you can see how your revenue would change if you had a different number of regular customers, um, as well as the customer spend per visit, annual growth rate, number of visits per regular to per month, and then all of your expenses down here, you can adjust the percentages of those as a percent of revenue. So at the bottom, you'll see the original income statement, which is just the income statement summary. Um, and these categories here are coming from the other expenses tab right here. So you'll see this original income statement. And then um, if you use the blue assumptions here, so the new items that you've plugged in, this is what your income statement would look like. So that's the modified income statement. So that's a great way to play with different scenarios, whether you want to do that for you or you're handing it to an investor for them to play with the different scenarios. Um, it's just a great tool that you can use without changing up your whole model. 
So that is a brief overview of our donut shop template. Um, if you have questions, feel free to reach out to us at support at projectionhub.com. Um, again, if you like the template, but it doesn't quite work for you, or maybe you need an additional revenue line, um, please reach out to us. We can modify this template for you or help you fill it out if you don't have the time to do it on your own. So feel free to reach out.